And who is married knows there are four situations which you find yourself in. Number one is when you're both in a good mood. And that's amazing. Number two is when the husband's in a good mood and the wife's in a bad mood. That's not so nice for the husband, usually. The, a, a third situation is when is the husband's in a bad mood and the wife's in a good mood. That's usually not so good for the wife. And there's a fourth situation when the husband and the wife are in a bad mood and that is really bad for everybody. We might think that these four situations are uh, constituted, they are created by uh, what their feelings are, how what they had for breakfast maybe, how their interactions with other people went, if they're at work, if they're at coil, um, where other, if they're in school, whatever they might be doing. We might think that this is why these interactions take place. But the Arizal reveals to us something much, much deeper. There's four situations where a person is vis-a-vis Hashem and the Shechina, the Shechina in Kala Yisrael. And that is that sometimes we are face-to-face, and there, that situation when there's great divine favor, and that was the situation um, when we had Kruven, where the Jewish people knew that there was tremendous love between Kala Yisrael and, um, and the Jewish and Hashem. And not just love, there's always tremendous love, there's always infinite love, but it was an expression of the love. Then there was a situation where, you know, um, uh, where um, one was facing the other, either the boy was facing the girl, the girl was facing the boy, right? And that was when one side was in a more positive state. And then there was Akhar Akhar, which means that um, there's a, a distance on both sides. Right? So, depending on where a person is in their spiritual relationship with Hashem, if they're in a situation where there's great closeness and the Shechina, the Divine Presence, is resting on them, and that's giving them joy and elevation, then that's what we call Ha'aras Panim, Simcha, joy. In such a situation, a person is generally happy, whether it be the husband or the wife, or both of them, or neither of them. If they're both able to maintain the situation, if the husband and wife are both able to live, working on their midos, being mavatir, conceding to each other, looking to help the other person, always thinking about the other person, there'll be a constant of joy. It'll be like this. It'll be panim upon him, and... That's called shalom bayis. That's called ish v'isha shalom b'neim shchina b'neim. Right? If there's peace between them, then divine presence is there, and there's a tremendous amount of uh, divine light resting on their marriage, and because the shchina is with them. The moment that one of them is not functioning in that capacity, either the husband or the wife, then it's what's called panim b'achar achar b'panim. Then there's the Shechina is in a distance, it's more distance from them, right? And if they reach a situation where they're both not uh, functioning well spiritually, that's called Akhar Akhar, then as Chazal tell us, Ish Isha, right? If you have Yud K there, Ka, then in Yud in the Ish and the He in the Isha, um, then you have Ish Isha, and you have the Shechina there, you have Ka. But if you take away the Ka, then you have Aish. And everybody knows what happens when the husband and wife are both in a bad mood. I know because sometimes I get those phone calls and sometimes my wife and I, we're in bad moods. You know, we're human beings, so it happens to us occasionally. Although I'm less than I used to. But occasionally it happens. So this is what we need to work on if we want to be have divine presence in our homes and we want to live a happy, blissful marital life one of the most difficult challenges in life is to maintain shalom bias, maintain shalom bias. I remember one Arab Yom Kippur I called up my Rebbe of Shlomo Brevda Zeicher Tzadik of Kaddish Levracha 
And I asked him a question. I said, I saw in the Sefer from his Rebbe, of Chazak Levenstein, it says that even a one-day-old baby is judged. I said, how do you judge a one-day-old baby? What's there to judge about this little pitchcloch? And he screamed at me, he says, you stupid American, he said. This is what you're thinking about every Yom Kippur? Work on your Shalom Bayez. And how right he was. A person who works on a Shalom Bayez, especially a man, because the men need to work on it very, very much, because they're naturally self-centered. A person, a man, works on it, but women are also invited to join this endeavor. But a man who works on a Shalom Bayez, right, will see the greatest fruit from it. Because working on your Shalom Bayez means working on your relationship with Hashem. Remember, Ish for Isha, Shechina B'neim, Shalom B'neim. Shalom B'neim, Shechina B'neim. If the Yud K is there, if the person is connected with Hashem, which means that he's working on his Midas, he's being Vater, he's saying, Koma Dev Rechman Tov Ovid, he's not being overly uh, spoiled, overly worked up by his wife who might be in a bad mood. And maybe he's in a bad mood because you caused it. Or maybe she's in a bad mood because the neighbor was not nice to her. Or maybe she's just in a bad mood because she's in a bad mood. You know, it happens. Maybe she burnt the um, she burnt the chicken and that made her upset. You know? So a man who's working on shalom bias, right, the shechin is there, and so he should strengthen his wife. So she should also be have the tenacity and have the strength to do it. And the same thing is true when the husband's in a bad mood, right? If the wife can just, you know, as the brother used to say from the British, it should let, let her husband's um, insensitive comments roll like water off a duck's back, you know, just cascading down a duck's back, you know, like, like that. And if she could do that, then she'll be in a really good place. She should remember the Gemara and Sanhedrin, which says every time someone makes a cruel statement to you, then you lose 100 of errors. So if your husband's like in a really bad mood, he might say 25 incentive statements. Just count that. That's 2,500 of errors. So that's like a lot of Bush and Hara is covered by that. And all you have to do is be quiet. Toilet Eretz al Blima. Misha Bolam Pi Bishas Machlokas. Somebody closes their mouth, they have Machlokas. That is what keeps the world going. So. This is some practical advice for marriage. Not that I'm worthy to give it at all. If you want to have any doubt, just ask my wife. But it's, I've, this is what I understand from the Arizal, and this is what I understand from my experience, and this is what I understand from seeing other people. And again, we spoke in the last classes about removing levels of darkness. The darkness is holding back the light, and the more darkness you remove, the more light is revealed. If this is true in anywhere, it's true in Shalom Bias. If a person is able to keep quiet, be mavater, work on their minos, say nice things to your spouse. One of my Talmudim came up to me and Ellen said, I really want to do something nice for my wife. What can I do? I said, you know, by supper, when you're sitting eating together, every night try to think of one compliment for your wife. Right? And it shouldn't be so hard. A person who really has a proper marriage should have at least 1,000 compliments for their spouse. If you don't have a minimum of 100 compliments ready for your spouse, then you have to work on your marriage because your spouse does so many things for you, right? But, you know, if, if you're a man, then she takes care of your children and she takes care of your home and she takes care of your meals, um, whatever type of job she does. You know, she just orders pizza, right? She made the phone call, right? So... Think of all the things you could say. And he started doing it. He said, wow, it really helped my wife so much. Perhaps this, this, this particular Avrech is in Tzaddik, but we can all follow in his footsteps, whether we be men or women. Right? Say good things about your spouse. Look for their faults. Sorry. Don't look. Let's try not to look for their faults. Look for their uh, good, positive attributes. Focus on them. Always focus on the positive. Right? Because... If you think your spouse has bad faults, you're right. They probably have a lot. Right? Um, I can think of myself of at least 7,320 
six things I have to work on, and that was only yesterday. Today is probably even more. Because if we're really honest with ourselves, we realize our shortcomings. But we don't let it get us down because we realize, again, those are all layers of darkness which are holding back light. And we have to thank Hashem for every single fault we have because that allows us to bring more and more light into our life. So Hashem in His infinite mercy should help us in our marriages and with our children and with our parnasa and with our health. All areas where, the four areas which are brother called Arba, Vos, and Zikin, in these four areas where problems are so prevalent, don't look at them as problems. Look at them as opportunities for growth, or as they're called, OFGs. Look at them as opportunities for growth or opportunities for light, OFLs, right? It's kind of like the NFL, right? Um, opportunities, OFD, OFL is opportunities for light. And if you could do that, your life will be so filled with light. Every day you'll be moving, removing more and more levels of darkness. It just occurred to me yesterday, and I'll conclude with this point, that we say, call ma David Rahman and Litov of it. Call, first of all, the word calls is Gematria 50, which represents um, the a point, the 50th Shah of Bina, is where a person goes from the limited human understanding to above that, right? To be able to, when you say, call ma David Rahman and Litov of it, when you don't understand what's going on, and you reach that point where it's pure amuna, which we said is atik. That's number one. Number two, call represents Yisod, the attribute of Yisod. Yisod is passing down, is the is the funnel, as it were, which brings blessing into this world. So when you say Koma David Rachman and Tovavid, you're connecting yourself to Atik and Yisod, the highest levels of divine um, Shefa, providence, coming down to this world. It's really worth it. It's really worth it. You're bringing, you have, if you would have a you know, spiritual picture of what goes on when your spouse is upset with you and you keep quiet and you say, I love my spouse, he's in a bad mood, it's panim ba'achar, right? Panim ba'achar, which means that he's in a bad mood and I'm in a good mood, hopefully, and I'm just going to accept it. And Hashem knows that I need to get rid of 2,500 of errors. If he said 25, uh, nasty things to me, then I'm getting rid of 2,500 of errors. Now, if it continues on a regular basis and your husband's not willing to change or your wife, then you might, you probably want to seek professional help. And um, I know some, some one of the best, a psychologist here in Israel, where Shlomo Zaman Orbach told me that Tishma Kolo, he's a brilliant person. Um, if you get in touch with me at DY Travis 613, he does Zoom meetings. I can put you in touch with him. And if, therefore, um, you might need someone like that if it's happening every single day. But if you're like most people, it happens occasionally, that your spouse is in a bad mood, your husband or your wife, then try to remember this idea of panim v'achar v'achar v'panim, that sometimes the wife has the light and the husband is missing it, and then he's in a bad mood and she's in a good mood. Or achar v'panim, sometimes the husband's has the light, and the wife is not getting it. And that's why it's like, and if you could live your life like that, you'll have bliss. You'll be in heaven on this world. you living in Olam Abba. So, again, I ask you, please join me daily for these classes so um, we can strengthen ourselves together. Press the follow button now and join me. And um, let's Try to work on all areas of our Lord's Hashem so we can thank Hashem for things which look bad but are really good. Right? And especially those levels of darkness, let's try to remove them so we can let the Shefa, the cornucopia, the infinite divine light into our life, a man came to itself.